Greetings, I'm DK Ronstadt. Welcome back to the TGT News. For the new and not so new entrepreneur, which comes first? Do you build a high quality product that people cannot resist and it gets around by word of mouth? Or do you penetrate a market where persons can access your good or service, realize they cannot do without it, and it takes off from there? Well, Anya Ayongchi has co-founded an initiative called Nudge Caribbean, and she joins us with entrepreneur Sarah Josan Katwaru to discuss market penetration for small entrepreneurs. For me, Micro is Mighty is an affirmation that each individual brand has a story behind it. Every single product has a person behind it. Every single service has a provider who has a story behind it. And so how do we bring those stories to the forefront? How do we reflect the value really and truly? You know, we're, we're sort of a mirror for that mightiness. Nudge is a platform where we are supporting small businesses to achieve their potential. Welcome ladies, thank you so much for making the time and Anya, if nudge is the answer, what is the question or situation that you're dealing with? That's a great one, DK. We are attempting to develop a platform that supports micro and small enterprises to be able to scale in a mindful way because oftentimes for micro and small businesses, the workload is very much dependent on the person. They have to do everything. And so how do we solve for creating an ecosystem and a support network that can ease some of that work and help sustainably grow what they would like to so that they can see development and know, of course, that there is also this network there to, to, to hold space for them because that is a lot of the time, especially through COVID, what is necessary. And that is one of the things that we want to ask you about, Sarah. But even before that, though, what is your business and how did you find out about Nudge? So my business, it, the name is Sarah Jo Designs. Um, it was adapted from my name, Sarah Josan. And it consists of handmade um, bags from sustainable materials like villa, panjut, um, canvas, leatherette, stuff like that, right? And um, they are 100% handmade. Um, and they are locally sourced. They, all the materials are locally sourced here. And the bags are multifunctional. You could use it as a beach tote, as a gym bag, as a makeup bag, anything like that. And I found out about Nudge because I actually participate in artesian markets. And I saw um, some fellow artesians who, um, you know, participated in this program, Nudge Caribbean. And I decided to, um, you know, ask questions and basically hop on. I visited the site at nudgecaribbean.com and I signed up. And yeah, after a couple of interviews, I was selected to be a part of the program. Congratulations and all the best moving forward. But Anya, how, how close or how similar is this story to some of the other non-nudge entrepreneurs in terms of them finding out about the program, possibly having the little um, questions all this, this, this what, this what we're going to be be a part of, and benefit ultimately benefiting from the experience. It's very similar in in some ways, and thank you so much for sharing, Sarah, because I think a lot of the awareness about the program has come from this peer-to-peer -peer network between entrepreneurs being at the market, recognizing that there's something about this particular program that respond to the needs of the entrepreneurs, which is something that as a team, we're very, very devoted to. We listen as much as we can. We design programming based on the feedback that we consistently receive from the entrepreneurs. And so I think the word of mouth has had a lot to do with the growth of the brand. The, ex the event that we, we produced last week called Nudge Now is one of our first or was one of our first very public outreaches to share a little bit about Nudge Caribbean and invite more applications to the program because now we are two years in and a lot more sort of clear about the direction that the organization is going in and therefore able to invite more entrepreneurs to join, particularly what we describe as the market access program that Sarah is a part of. And we have had this very similar feedback that people 
went to the website, filled out the form, which is what anybody who's listening here has a micro or small business may be interested in. And I think that we do a very good job, or we try our best to do a job to make it inviting, inclusive, welcoming, and, um, you know, even if you're not ready to be part of the program, we do try to find ways to help you become ready. So there's a scope of support that we offer, and we're really here to invite more people to come and join us. And you spoke about the market access program. What are some of the other initiatives that have taken form over these two years? We are at the moment taking a more formal approach to what we describe as the education and capacity building program, as well as our funding program. And we have a program that we describe as community engagements. Really, uh, our community engagement is at the core of how we do the work. We make sure that they were building community, not only between, you know, the entrepreneurs per island. We're in three islands right now, Trinidad, St. Lucia, and Barbados. And we're really working towards the next stage of building regional community because we recognize how much the entrepreneurs also support one another. And we want to be able to create more ways that that, that networking can happen more organically. And the education and capacity building um, has been, been happening over the last couple of years with the community of entrepreneurs that we went from 12 entrepreneurs to now 90 plus. And as we iterate the programs with the existing community, that's how we get closer and closer to being able to offer them more widely. So those are the four programs that I mentioned, market access, education and capacity building, funding and community engagement that we currently offer. Thank you so much for that. And speaking about building the, the network and having entrepreneurs uh, help each other, uh, Sarah, Josanne, what has your experience been like? How does it feel to say, okay, well, I'm sourcing these materials locally and now I have a little larger window where people can see what it is I have to offer and therefore that trickles down to all of the people that you get your materials from. What does that feel like? It's, it's almost kind of like feel the, the, the community growing a little bit. Yeah, it feels um, amazing and slightly surreal because um, when I started Sierra Jury Designs, it was really just um, um, a means of getting income um, because I had to pursue my degree full time and I had to leave my eight to four. And having it reached to where it is now, it's just, um, it's unbelievable, you know. Um, I must say that Nudge, the experience of Nudge has really taken on. Um, in terms of marketing and sales, because you know, as an entrepreneur, you would have um, several things to do, which is the sourcing of materials, production, marketing, and then sales. And in terms of the marketing and the sales, they really have taken that off of me. Um, usually when I used to do markets, it used to be um, seasonal. So more around the Christmas season or for event for Mother's Day. And now um, having the accessibility that Nudge offers at um, a high traffic market access like that, um, like in a grocery, you know, um, a lot of people, a lot of my customers ask, you know, where can I get your product and having them be able to come and interact with the product and see the product and, you know, purchase the product um, conveniently, you know, um, that has been an amazing experience um, for me on the whole. And I'm not going to ask Anya about your feedback from that testimonial, but we take a short break. We're speaking with Sarah mm -hmm. Josanne Katwaru, as well as Anya Ayongchi about Nudge Now and Nudge Caribbean. Stay with us. We'll return with more. Welcome back. We are going in-depth on market penetration for small entrepreneurs using the vehicle of Nudge Caribbean. We're speaking with founder Anya Ayongchi and entrepreneur Sarah Josan Katwaru. But that formalization that you were talking about, Anya, it feels as though Nudge happened during, during the pandemic. It's only two years. So in terms of that, and every, everybody's using the word pivot. You just spoke about formalizing things a little bit. How important is it that these things that come from intuition, these things come from, that come from artistic expressions, they formalize in a way so that they make money, so they continue to make sense? Gosh, that's at the heart of it, DK. I think that, as Sarah mentioned, there's, you know, there's, it's one thing to start as a side hustle, you know, something you're using to supplement your, your income. It's a whole other thing when this becomes your livelihood. And livelihood requires sustainability, it requires consistency, it requires markets, like Sarah's saying. And so I think Nudge itself is an early stage um, organization. And so we have come to a stage of 
slightly more formalization, as I mentioned, with programmatic approach that, that we talked about earlier. And we think that the programs that we're developing are designed to support a similar level of embedding more frameworks, embedding more systems, embedding more consistent approach to the work, the development of the work, so that there can be consistent livelihood because we're banking on the fact that when people like Sarah get to do this work for a living and they can leave their eight to four, then there's a measure of joy in doing something that you love to do and making a living off of it. But in order for that to work, you do have to, like you're saying, have a level of formal approach to the business because the business has to earn and it has to earn in a way that you can count on. And that's where we feel that education and capacity building, for instance, providing access to market distribution and having access to funding are all areas that we recognize. This has all been designed based on feedback from the entrepreneurial community. So we can almost you know, solidly say, based on data, that this is the, these are the types of programs that are needed for that kind of sustainability. And was the data, was the inspiration, was the feedback that led to expansion into St. Lucia and Barbados? We have our primary partner in Massey, Massey Group, which of course is well known across the region, has a very significant footprint regionally through their retail stores. And so the opportunity to expand into those islands was afforded to us by this partnership, which has been incredible for Nudge. And the impetus really is we've always, you know, it was from the very beginning named Nudge Caribbean for that reason. We knew that we wanted to expand it across the region. These are the three islands that we've started with. The whole region is our, our vision. And we believe in regional growth, collective growth and collective success. We believe that as a region, we can build together more collaboratively. And we, we are sort of banking on that through, as I said, the support of a group like Massey to be able to have a footprint in each island and grow this ecosystem so that there is shared collective resourcing and um, development in a consistent way. Sarah, what kind of feedback are you giving entrepreneurs, artisans within your circle in terms of saying, okay, well, I think this is something that you should be trying to get a hold of. This is something that you should be accessing. You should be engaging Nudge Caribbean. Um, in terms of the feedback from my other like colleagues um, or entrepreneurs, um, I tell them to go for it because you know, the markets are something they are, they work well as in the Atishan markets, they work well. Um, but having something like Nudge where you could actually have an income, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't necessarily have to be there, you know, you don't have to be present at the markets. We have brand ambassadors from Nudge who takes care of those things, you know, and I think it is um, a good mean means of, um, you know, getting a product out there and being able to still collect a profit, profit or income at the end of the day. So, you know, I, I do tell them to join it. Um, I think it is the next um, level to take their business from, well, to, sorry, from and to, you know, and um, yeah, I, even for myself, I hope that um, I could eventually graduate to um, being on the Massey shelves because I know Anya would have said that there are three different um, stages to the program, you know, um, yeah, and having my product there um, throughout even while I'm producing, it will give me a lot more time to be able, it will take a lot off my plate to be able to create more and do more and come up with more ideas um, whilst my product is being sold. So yeah, I, I definitely encourage them to participate. Especially when you're chief cook, bottle washer, you're the sole person there and all of this work, all this effort, all this energy has to come from you. And I really appreciate that. But Anya, is there, is, can one person apply for different aspects of, of, of the benefits that are available through Nudge? Yes, actually, the way that we are um, charting a course right now, because like I mentioned earlier, although we're two years in, we're still hashing out a lot of how we operate. And so in order to really refine the programming, we are offering those four programs that I mentioned to you to the entrepreneurs who apply to the market access program. So once you're part of our market access program, you become eligible for the education and capacity building aspect, the funding aspect, and then of course the community building aspect. So there are all of those 
programs and benefits are available to the entrepreneurs that we are growing together with. And so therefore, yes, the answer is that you can apply for if to your point, funding as well as be part of the market access program as well as participate in the education curriculum. What are some of the partners? And I asked that question because there are some persons that we've spoke with, spoken with, and you hear kind of similar things in terms of like Kariri with their Idea Lab. Uh, so who are some of the partners? You, you spoke about one of the primary partners being Massey. Who are some of those other people that you're holding hands with taking this initiative forward? We are, as I said, Massey is our primary partner and um, primary funding partner as well. We also have had funding from the Caribbean Development Bank and we've developed the market access program in tandem with the project that we have worked on with, with them in particular. Um, that expansion into, into Barbados and St. Lucia came very much out of that partnership with the CDB. And we've also partnered with the United Nations on a project that they have done globally called Generation Unlimited. And that's actually where we have taken the community building and within that, the education and the funding programs into, and we're about to launch an online platform that will allow for scaling of those programs so that we can now operate more virtually and offer certain amounts of those programs in a way that all of the islands can participate. Those are our three main partners from a funding and strategic standpoint. We also work with Tech Beach Retreats, which I'm sure you know about, um, a conference, well, it's turned from a conference into a variety of other programs. They have supported us in a lot of the education and capacity building area. And we have worked with Youth Business TNT, YBTT, because there's a lot of alignment there, as you mentioned. I mean, there's a lot of this work happening. And so the more we can collaborate, the less we can replicate, the better off we all are. Not having to, like you said, reinvent that wheel. So we want to thank you so much, Anya, Anya Young-Chi, founder of Nudge Caribbean, as well as Asera Josan Katwaru, Nudge Caribbean entrepreneur. Looking at market penetration for small entrepreneurs, bless you and the work of your hands and what you're doing, carrying others forward. And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, I'm DK Ronster. This has been In Depth with me. Thank you for joining us.